let's now see an uh, example for hypothesis testing regarding the average of the population. So we're going to back to the uh, example that we had regarding the claim made about the average number of TV sets in US homes. So the uh, statement is the te test the claim that the true average number of TV sets in US homes is equal to three. Assume that the standard deviation of the population in this uh, problem is known to be 0.8. So we're going to uh, go through every uh, steps for testing a hypothesis in a statistic. The first step that we need to do is we need to uh, state the, uh, the two confronting uh, hypotheses. So we're going to write the null and alternative hypothesis. The null hy hypothesis is going to state the current situation or the existing condition. The existing condition is the average number of US TV homes in US is three. So we are talking about the average of the population. So the parameter here is mu, average, and that's equal to three. The alternative hypothesis is going to oppose this hypothesis or a statement. So it's going to say, no, the average is not equal to three. Since we have inequality, a strict inequality in our alternative hypothesis, this means that we are dealing with a two-tailed test. The next step is to specify the desired level of significance and the sample size. So uh, suppose we want to test the uh, hypothesis at 5% significance level. So we set alpha equal to 5%. And suppose that we um, set the size of the sample equal to 100. So we want to take a 100 sample of a sample of 100 households and compute the average number of TV sets that they have. And then we're going to use that evidence uh, to test these hypotheses. The next step is to determine the appropriate technique that we need to use. That's what test techniques should we use or what test statistics should we use as evidence here. So since we are talking about the average of the population mu, and since we already know based on the problem statement, the standard deviation of the population that sigma is known. So we can actually use a Z statistic um, to test hypothesis. So the, the test statistic is going to be a Z test. Next step is to determine the critical values in our test. So since alpha, the significant level, we set it as 5%, uh, we keep, and also our technique here, the test statistic is a Z test. So at 5% significance level, our critical values, we're going to have two because we have a two tail test. So we're going to have a two tail, a two critical values here. So we're going to have plus and minus 1.96 as our critical value. And this is based on Z of alpha over two for alpha equal to 5%. Z of alpha over two the critical value on the right is going right tail is going to be 1.96 and the critical value on the left z of negative alpha over 2 is going to be negative 1.96 so we're going to have these two critical values and based on this we can draw our uh, acceptance and rejection region the next step is to collect the data and compute the test statistic value to see whether we would accept or reject a null hypothesis. So suppose the sample results are as follows. We have a sample of size 100. The average of the sample we computed, that's equal to 2.84. The standard deviation, we know that it's known and is equal to 0.8. So the test statistic value is going to be like this. The Z stat, we're gonna plug in the numbers that we have. X bar is equal to 2.84. Uh, the value of mu, comes from the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis says that mu is equal to three. So that's where three comes from. This is three. So always in the test statistic that you have, the value of the parameter comes from the null hypothesis. And other numbers we have sigma is known to be 0.8. So we have it 0.8 and we set the value of the sample size n is 100. 
So if we log in all the numbers and we compute the z statistic value, the test statistic value here is negative 2. Now we need to determine whether this is going to fall in the acceptance region or in the rejection region. So we need to find and compute the acceptance and rejection region using um, the critical values that we have. The next and the last step is to determine whether based on the test statistic value that we computed and based on the critical value we would reject or accept the null hypothesis. So we have two critical values. We have 1.96 on the right, that's this point here, and the negative 1.96 on the left. So anything beyond 1.96, this is going to be the rejection region on the right, and this is going to be the rejection region on the left. And in between, this is going to be the acceptance region. So the test statistic value that we computed is negative 2. Negative 2 is actually less than negative 1.6. So if you want to show it in this graph, let me clear this up. This is negative 1.96 and negative 2 is going to fall here. So clearly it's going to fall in the rejection region. So based on this, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. That's going to be our judgment and conclusion based on this test and the evidence that we have gathered. Hypothesis testing example two. Suppose you are the manager of a fast food restaurant. You want to determine whether the average waiting time to place an order has changed in the past months from its previous value that known to be 4.5 minutes, that's the population mean, or not. So from the experience, you can assume that the population is normally distributed with a population a standard deviation of 1.2 minutes. So that's sigma. Sigma is equal to 1.2 minutes. You select a sample of 25 orders during a one hour period. The sample mean is 5.1 minutes. Determine whether there is evidence at the 5% significance level that the population average waiting time to place an order has changed. Let's go through all the steps of hypothesis testing for this example. The first step is to state the null and alternative hypothesis. Starting with the null hypothesis. So here we are talking about the average of the population. That's the average of waiting time to put an order. The problem states that it used to be 4.5 minutes. So the null hypothesis is the status quo. So that means that it hasn't changed. The average time, waiting time, is a seal uh, for 4.5 minutes. So this is what the null hypothesis says. On the other hand, the alternative hypothesis is going to reject this, it's going to oppose this, it's going to confront this. So it's going to say, no, the average of waiting time is not equal to 4.5 minutes. It has changed. So because we are dealing with an inequality for, alter, for alternative hypothesis, this means that we are dealing with a two-tailed test here. The next step is to identify the sample size and the significance level. We defined this, uh, we set the sample size equal to 25 and the significance level equal to 5%. You can identify, you can actually pick different values for this, but this is what we are going to go with. The third step is to identify the technique that we want to use. That's the test statistics technique that you want to use. Since we are talking about the average of the population here, that's as you can see here, mu. You're talking about mu, the average of the population. And since sigma is known, it is given in the problem. So that means that we can actually use a z-test here. So our technique is a z-test statistic. The fourth step is to identify the critical values, to find the critical value. So since the significance level is 5% and we are dealing with a z-value, z-test, um, at 5%, the z-value is 
1.96 on the critical value for the right and negative 1.6 for the critical value on the left. So the rejection region is going to be beyond these two values. That means that if the value of this test statistic is beyond 1.96, is greater than 1.96, we're going to reject the known hypothesis. And also if it is the value is less than 1.96, is going to reject the known hypothesis. Anything, any value that falls between negative 1.96 and 1.96 is going to be in the acceptance region. We're going to accept the known hypothesis. The next step is to collect data. So we take a sample and we collect data based on the test statistic that we have, which is a Z test value, and then compute the average of the sample. Suppose that the average of the sample is 5.1, and we are using a Z test statistic. So we have to compute the value of test statistic. The value of test statistic is going to be basically the Z value of X bar. So the formula is x bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n. So what we need to do is just plug in the numbers that we have. x bar is 5.1 and mu is 4.5. And that comes from the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis says that the average waiting time um, is 4.5. So the value of the parameter in the test statistics always come from the null hypothesis. So we compute the value of the test statistic value and that's 2.5. The next step and last step is to determine based on the evidence that we have, which is the value of test statistics and the acceptance and re rejection region based on the significance level that we have and our dis distribution. Uh, to see whether we have to reject or accept the null hypothesis. So here we are dealing with a normal distribution and a Z distribution. And let me plot it here. So this is how it would look like. This is our average here. And we have two rejection region, one on the right and one on the left. The critical value on the right is 1.96. The critical value on the left is negative 1.96. And 2.5 would actually follow in the right rejection region. So that means that we're going to have to reject the null hypothesis. And we would conclude that based on our analysis, there is sufficient evidence that the population mean waiting time to place an order in this problem has changed. It's not the same. It's not equal to 4.5 which is, is stated as a null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is rejected in the favor of the alternative hypothesis, meaning the, the average waiting time has changed. And it's not 4.5 minutes anymore.